This is the US Army's next generation squad weapon optic, and it aims to replace all of the other standard issue scopes currently in service in the military. It's a massive leap forward from the old ACOG. And we have the first ever video footage available of what it's like to actually look down the scope. Today we're going to analyze the new features for you. It's like going from your flip phone to your smartphone, except according to L3 Harris you can't download Tinder on this thing. I got an exclusive opportunity to hold, touch, feel, and smell this fire control system at AUSA in DC at the L3 Harris booth. It's one of two scopes in a competition to upgrade and replace the US military's legacy systems. According to the Army, the philosophy behind building this new computer calculating system is that they want to pair the new weapons to this optic. Going to the new weapon uh, with a longer effective range, one of the things they wanted to do was to be able to increase the magnification. So this is a 1 to 6x variable magnification system. To quote, increase the soldier's ability to rapidly engage man-sized targets at out to 600 meters or greater while maintaining the ability to conduct close quarters battle. But is this optic actually capable of doing all that? It increases first round hit probability and it also shortens the cycle from time that you see a target to the time that you can engage that target accurately. I've labeled a few different parts of the scope interior here and we'll go through what each of these numbers refer to. The numbers one, two, and five are all target reference points that you can create. So it took me a minute to fully understand how useful this feature is and the engineers described it to me like this. Those ID points that you mark will display when the operator moves the reticle back over the area where that reference point is set. So imagine in a defensive position, you look over your field of view or your sector of responsibility and you add reference point locations inside the fire control. Later on, you can quickly locate and move back over those reference markers and know the exact range to the target and then engage. It's basically like having a real-time digital range card in your scope's display. You're marking locations and the scope keeps track of them. If you're in a defensive position, you could yell out to your squad to all look at reference point number one if you see movement over there and instantly your whole squad would be on the same page. Number three is the heading angle, which means the angle that you're holding your weapon relative to your target. This is actually the most important part because when you look down the scope of your rifle, it tells you the compass heading direction that you're facing your weapon. And if you know anything about the infantry, the first thing you do when you get in contact is you call out the three Ds. Distance, direction, and description. So right here on the display, it's telling you your direction. You don't have to pull your head away, pull out a compass, and get lost if you're a lieutenant. Nope, it's right there Chris, for you. Chris, can you stop playing dress up? I'll be right there. Number four is just the heading abbreviation. Number six is the battery life indicator, and if you're anything like me with my cell phone, you'll probably be running at 10% all the time and yet never completely running out of battery somehow. Number seven is the range indicator. That tells you how far away you're pointing the weapon system. So I pressed the button on the side of the optic and then it instantly changed that number from 35 meters to 49 meters and it also instantly updated the ballistic solution. It adjusted the crosshairs within my field of view and I could see that happen in real time. It's factoring in that new distance and environmental information, which is something you would have had to guess at in the past. You would have had to do all of that math in your head. Guessing and adding numbers is usually never a regular infantry's strong suit. For instance, if I was smart, do you think I'd be making videos in my bedroom on a green screen? The green tint that you might have noticed over the field of view is there because of some coatings that are applied to the glass prior to assembly. The green tint would be barely noticeable in an outdoors environment. The eye relief on your scope refers to the distance between this lens and your eye in order to get a good sight picture. So every, every optic has a different eye relief. And on the next gen fire control system, the eye relief is 3.5 inches, which is the industry standard. The key thing here is that the eye relief doesn't change as you adjust the magnification from one to six times magnified. It stays the same and many lower end scopes do not have that nice feature. So what we can do on that display is draw what we call a disturbed reticle. So it's an electronic reticle that we can move based on range, temperature, other environmental sensors. So what the system, how you would operate the system is that you would um, range using this button. The system will calculate your range to target and then draw you a new solution. Did you see the, the reticle move? 
you might be wondering how long a soldier can operate in the field with the next gen fire control system using its battery. So that's an important issue. The battery life on the next gen fire control system can last many days depending on how many times you hit the laser rangefinder button. I know some of you out there are gonna be hitting that laser rangefinder button every time you see a squirrel or a possum out in the wood line. Cut that out. We're trying to save batteries over here. Do you have any idea what I had to do to get those extra batteries from the supply sergeant last time? So the next gen fire control system takes four AA commercial batteries. In a worst case scenario, you can rob the ones out of your mouse or TV remote in between operations. Game changer is of course a tired old cliche, but what do you want me to do? Think of new descriptive language to use? So you can cycle through four different modes, including combat mode, CQB mode, which is when it's just a red dot only, and there's another mode, which is the illuminated reticle on and off. So you can use the glass without power if you run out of batteries. There's also a target reference point mode where the user can set specific targets at various common ranges within the field of view. I'm told you can also wipe the display so as not to distract you in combat. If the average soldier's attention is anything like my own, they've probably already switched to another video on YouTube, something better like a makeup tutorial vlog for your optic. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to bedazzle your next gen fire control system so that the enemy can really see your personality as a soldier. Some other new things that I learned from getting my hands on this new defense technology is that there's a lot of resistance on the knob. So when I adjusted the variable magnification, when I spun it from one to six times magnification, I really had to apply a fair amount of pressure on the lever to move it. It won't budge if you accidentally tap it. There's one other thing that this scope has going for it. It hasn't been released yet, so the enemy in Afghanistan don't have it yet, unlike all the egg hogs that they're running around with now. I was told by the subject matter experts at L3 Harris that all the environmental sensors, the computer ballistic system, it all lives right near the rear of the optic. So that's where all the ballistic software is. They're designing this combat optic with software that can be adjusted or updated in the future. When I picked up the optic, it was much lighter than I anticipated because it looks big and bulky, but it actually isn't as heavy as it appears to be. And that's because the laser rangefinder, that big piece on top that takes up like, it looks like 50% of it, is actually very lightweight. So it's 2.5 pounds heavier than the ACOG, but it's not as big as you might expect. Cappy, I don't care what you say about these new next generation fancy optics. I'm that old boomer in your squad that continues to use his iron sights to this day. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that this is gonna replace shooting fundamentals. Having a smooth trigger squeeze, not moving when you fire, not anticipating the shot is all going to remain as important as ever. Don't get me wrong. But it's still fascinating to get this inside look at the future of combat optics. Having that laser rangefinder up there takes up the space that would normally be used for a close quarters optic. For instance, a lot of times you'd see with the ACOG, operators would place a tiny close quarters optic on top of it. But with this, you're now better off of placing that on the side and angling the weapon. So it would be a canted optic. Even though this can zoom out all the way to one times magnification, I don't know if I would wanna be trying to find the eye relief in a room clearing situation. So for that reason, I don't know if scopes are great for close quarters urban environments. But that's why you have canted sights. The real value of this scope for infantry will be the ability to extend the range beyond 300 meters. I'm hearing up to 700 meters, even with the M4. So in the past with the old ACOG, everyone zeroed the gun for 300 meters. And if your target in combat was at 500 meters, you had to look at a bullet drop compensator, the BDC as it's called, and you would reference that line with the target and fire. You then cross your fingers and hope that you guessed the right distance. Or maybe you had a laser rangefinder on you, but it was always separate from your optics, so you had to take your eye off the target, find the laser range data, and then look through the scope again and hope that the enemy was nice enough to stick around while you did your homework. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Follow me at Cappy Army on Instagram for live updates. You're watching Task and Purpose, and I'll see you next week.